and then we have the leakage current power dissipation which happens when the circuit is not in function mode when there is no activity happening in the circuit it is in standby mode and due to the leakage current there is some power dissipation so there are many sources of leakage power dissipation for example if we see at the transistor level reverse bias diode leakage in the transistor if you see between an channel and this p subtract there is a diode formation and when the diode is in the reverse bias the reverse bias condition in that particular case if there is a small current flowing through the diode that is nothing but reverse bias diode current then we have the gate induced drain leakage when the drain voltage is significantly high there is a formation of gate and drain overlap here and that will cause the gate, gate induced drain leakage and then we have the current due to the gate oxide turning here and the next is sub threshold leakage when the device is in sub threshold region or weak inversion region where there is the, the where the formation of channel has not happened properly the device is still below the weak threshold voltage but in that particular case also if there is any current flowing through the diode that is happens in the weak inversion region then the current flowing in that particular case is nothing but sub threshold leakage current so guys the, the explanation of all these leakage current in more details is out of scope from this episode but if you would like to know in uh, all these leakage current in more details please write down in the comment section and i can go ahead with the another episode so all these currents are actually when the device is in standby mode or when there is no functionality and the power associated with these currents is nothing but leakage current power dissipation so we can optimize the leakage power dissipation also there are various techniques through which we can optimize the leakage power as well 